Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect Systems video show coverage for the Hi-Fi Show Live 2018. Make sure to go and visit our website for Hi-Fi news, reviews and more. We'd like to thank our show coverage sponsors, Telerium Q Cables, for helping us make this show coverage possible. Hi, I'm Garth Powell. I'm a design engineer and director of power products for AudioQuest. Now today, we're actually sharing this room and this demonstration with a couple of superb partners that have brought some fantastic products to help us with this audio demo. Now, one of them is the famous Lin. This is the Lin Select All-in-One Player. Streamer, preamplifier, amplifier, absolutely superb. Incredible resolution. As well as the Kodos 505. Isobaric loaded, um, six and a half inch driver, one inch um, textile dome, absolutely amazing resolving power incredibly fast love the speakers but what we're going to be demonstrating is our new range of power cables but before we get to the new range and some of the new technologies i think it's really instructive and informative to go backwards where did this start because i'm 56 years old when i started in this industry i started as a young child I was a mere 15 years old when I was the technician in a small audio salon. And at that time, it was custom, no matter how expensive the amplifier, no matter how great the loudspeaker, to use very simple and modest lamp cord. Some of that lamp cord was even tin plated. No well healed audiophile or reviewer would even consider something like that today. But at the time, it's what we knew. And actually, it's not crazy that we started there because to this day, if you ask an electrical engineer to measure that type of cable, it is more, more than capable of faithfully delivering at zero VU level, 20 hertz or even lower than that, to well in excess of 20,000 hertz. And assuming that you have reasonable damping factor and the wire isn't too long, it's capable of delivering um, enough current, particularly RMS, to where, on steady state to where your damping factor or your control of the woofer and its magnet or motor would be sufficiently good. The idea was that this should be more than good enough. Why would we need to go beyond this? Well, because over time, people become dissatisfied. They want more out of their system. And it's part of the constant evolution of trying to get our systems better and better. More of the experience, more of the motion, less distortion, less in the way of the sound. So what occurred was the start of the cable re resolution and or the cable revolution. And what happened at that particular point was people started to experiment. But most of these experimentations never really got much of an audience. But eventually one customer or one creator came along that realized a marketing potential along with new cable designs. These cables were larger than had traditionally been used and somewhat unique in their overall topology, the way in which they're made. This was a company called Monster. And in 1980 to 81, this cable was absolutely, you know, like a, a revelation for most people that were used to a very poorly made lamp cord tin plated. That's what we're gonna listen to first. This is going all the way back to 1981 a 1981 um, uh, essentially state of the art. Let's give a listen. This is a guitar recording, Stairway to Heaven. Thank you. Okay, what we'd like to do next is we'd like to switch to today, 2018. This is a design called the AudioQuest Comet. This is far more technology. We have things like solid core conductors, which we now understand have yield far less distortion than the very fine strands of the original monster and so a lot of many other early designs. We have dielectric biasing. We have superior insulation material, which is the dielectric. There are many things that have been paid attention to, even the grain texture across the entire length of the wire. All of that 
has been tended to and optimized for this cable. So this particular cable we're gonna to listen to is probably about at least a decade old design, but essentially uh, will demonstrate what has been close to the pinnacle of technology for the last several years, really up to about this point, except for what's going to follow it is our latest technology that's debuting this month. This is the AudioQuest Comet. Let's try that. One of the things that our founder, Bill Lowe, is very fond of saying, and this is absolutely as true today as the first time he said it, the best cable is no cable. Cables are a minute circuit, and with them creates an absolutely cauldron of problems. Ideally, we wouldn't have them, but wireless isn't the answer either, because that creates even more problems. So you have to have a cable, but ideally we'd have it as short as possible and with as little problems as possible, but those are hard to engineer out. They're intrinsic with these things. Nothing is perfect, whether it's a preamplifier, a loudspeaker, any other transducer, a phono cartridge, digital transmission, zeros and ones, they all have their issues. And it's a question, and it's an, not only a science, but it's an art form to try to minimize the damage, minimize the loss, and get more performance. Now, what you heard when we went to the Comet is more microdynamics, more involvement, more emotion, uh, simply better resolution, more detail, more there, there. And the reason for that is, again, better dielectric, dielectric biasing, vastly superior copper that's being employed. Going right down the line, simply more is there. But what if we could do better? That's been our challenge. Well, we started work on that a couple of years ago, and the new Mystical Creatures series of cables starts with the Thunderbird. You can listen to that next, where we take these same principles that we use for the Comet and many other cables we currently uh, address or currently sell and manufacture, but we've also now addressed to an even greater level noise dissipation noise dissipation to a far greater level and doing so consistently or linearly across the range. We have made sure of this by taking care of a fundamental vexing problems that cables have always had. They have something called a characteristic impedance. Now with a characteristic impedance, what that means is that it wants to see ideally a type of impedance at the source, that being the amplifier's output, and going into the load, that being the loudspeaker. And because of this, some people have theorized that, well, if my loudspeaker is 8 ohms, I need an 8 ohm speaker cable. But every attempt to do this has always failed. And why? Well, one of the reasons is that what comes out of an amplifier is never 8 ohms. Even if you have a traditional valve amplifier that is silkscreen 8 ohms on it, what really comes out of it is a fraction of an ohm. It has to be, if you had something that was truly 8 ohms out and you essentially loaded into 8 ohms, you would lose half your amplifier power. That would never work and you'd have the muddiest bass ever because you'd be zero damping factor. No, that's not really going to work. So they've just put up with the fact that you're going to have some sort of characteristic impedance. That characteristic impedance is never right for the given load. It's typically far too low, in fact, for the transient and what happens then is essentially you have a flow of energy. Now, 
traditionally what's done between, say, a preamplifier and an amplifier is you have an output impedance that's relatively low, and it goes into an input impedance that's relatively high. It's like a funnel. And you go on the short end, and you go out, and you release it. So it's fairly unrestricted. That energy can flow without being constricted and cut off. But what's going to happen if your characteristic impedance is going out the wrong way and we flip that funnel around. That's what most cables are doing. They're restricting that flow of energy. So what are we gonna do about this? We can't get the ideal impedance. That won't work like a transmission line. What if we got rid of the characteristic impedance entirely? That's what we've done with the new power cables, or new speaker cables, excuse me, from the Mystical Creatures series. We're gonna start with the Thunderbird and listen to what that does. the volume up. It just seems like we did. And the reason for that is, is that when you listen to volume, you're not listening to sine waves, you're not listening to sine tones, unless you're listening to a pipe organ. Other than that, you're listening to the transients, whether it be from percussion, like the strike of a snare drum, bam, or that of a cymbal, ting, or the plectrum from a string, gling. And that is a peak-to-peak -peak voltage swing in electronics that's very fast and immediate, and our ear responds to it instantly. That's what grabs us, that's what wakes us up, that's what gives it that attention. When this happens, you have, in effect, a that is a component of the volume or the overall sense of dynamics and dynamic range that you're responding to. And when you compress current, you've compressed those dynamics. You've taken those sharp edge transients and you've rounded them off with sandpaper. You've filed and whittled them away until everything's smooth and slow and muddy and getting old and falling apart. Well, we don't want that. We want this music to be alive. We want all the impact that that artist intended. And to do that, you have to get out of its way. That Lin Select is capable of brightness. We want to make sure that it gets all of those transients to the kudos or to any loudspeaker and it can do that if given the opportunity. To do that we have to make sure that we've got, yes, a large enough amount of cable to where the DC resistance is low but the main thing along with that is we have to make sure that the characteristic impedance is out of the equation, out of the way and that's what we've done with this new range of cable. But also that technology ensures that we are not only lowering noise but we're doing so consistently. There's over 13 octaves of noise that exist today. When we talk about a lot of the noise that's coming you know, from various electronics in a system or on the AC mains, for, for example, from different motors and things like that, but also a great deal of that, at least 10 octaves of that, is just radiated RF noise that's basically through our atmosphere and induced into the cable. And the reason that's a problem is, is that even though it's many, many octaves above, it's not that you're gonna hear your local FM rock station coming through your system. The problem is, is that 
it's not going to be able to multiplex it. It's not going to be able to have you sing along or hear what was there. It's going to come in as a noise, but it's coming in as a noise that's covering up the low level detail and doing this the mask in effect. And I can't hear what's going on. All my low level information is clear like this. So we want to unearth it. But in order to do that, we need to do a lot of work. We can't just use a twisted, you know, like pair technology. That's decades tech earlier technology. That's not good enough today. We can't use a simple shield alone. That's not good enough anymore. We have to go many steps beyond that. And we have to make sure that any noise dissipation or filtering that we do, we do so linearly, evenly, consistently. I can't have noise at one octave go away for another octave to only be this good and a quarter octave from there have a noise peak where we're going this and 10 or 13 octaves of this, 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 that will not work. Whether it's our Niagara series, our power cords, or our speaker cables, it's the same principle. If you're gonna get rid of the noise, do it right. Get all of it or don't do it at all. Now what we'd like to do is listen to the pinnacle of our current technology, the AudioQuest Dragon. Now this has essentially the same topology, the same circuitry, the same thoughts and designs that we put into the Thunderbird that you just heard. We've really only changed one variable, but it's an important variable. We've gone from perfect surface copper plus to perfect surface silver. Now, silver is enormously expensive and the way in which we anneal and treat it makes it many, many more times so. We wish that weren't so, but to get the best performance it is. Why is it so important? Well, for one thing, it's a much better conductor at audio frequencies, but where it's an even more apparent superior conductor is at radio frequencies. And the big part of our current designs and all AudioQuest designs is that it's not just that they're great at the passband or frequency of which they were intended for the primary signal, but also at draining, you know, extraneous noise energy away away from critical components and making sure you get all the performance you possibly can. Let's listen to Dragon. For the last 25 years or more, I've worked professionally in the audio industry. And one of the things that's frustrated me, whether I've worked on power, or whether I've worked on power cables, speaker cables, air connect cables, whatever it might be, is that this particular segment of the audio community, whether in the magazines, whether it reviewers, for many dealers and really for the public at large has been perceived as an accessory. Why wouldn't they be that way? Because they've always been listed and categorized as such. An accessory, basically an afterthought, a, a, a small trifle, an addition to the system. That doesn't sound like a trifle or a thoughtless addition to me. It's a circuit. It's something that a designer or an engineer or a scientist like Bill O or myself and the rest of the company that helps us to do this and bring this to everybody and educate the world, we've all worked incredibly diligently and so hard on this. We've put everything that we know into something like this and it's one of the things that's allowing you to hear how great the Lin Select and again, the Kudos 505s really are. But the thing is, is that they can't possibly obtain that level of performance, that emotional engagement when you listen, if they don't have the componentry, if they don't have the tools that will allow them to do that. Once the information is lost, it's lost forever. You're not bringing it back by upgrading. You have to have that link in the chain be correct, whether it's the power, whether it's the cabling, whether it's the electronics, whether it's the speaker, everything matters and it matters equally. Sometimes something like this isn't as 
present in the mind. It's not as beautiful as looking at the veneer. And this is incredibly important, but so is the cable. Because what I observe, and I hopefully what you'll have now understand as well, is that this is not an accessory. It's a necessity. Thank you very much for your time. Cool. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Next year, the Hi-Fi Show Live moves to Royal Ascot, where even bigger and better things are being planned. See you all there next year.